All right. If you have your Bibles, I'd like to share a few things that I'm not a preacher per se. I, I share what God shared with me. And when Paul called me, in fact, before he called me in my own personal devotion to study, I've been thinking about this country, the world's a mess. Do you all notice that? Anger, hatred, political, on the sports arena, everywhere you look. Families are being destroyed, and there's an anger there. And the scripture is clear about we are in this world, but we are not of this world. God has made clear in his world that he has given us a different spirit, a holy spirit. Those that have come to Jesus Christ have experienced rebirth. In fact, in the third book of, the, of John's gospel, as Jesus is speaking with Nicodemus, a man who was schooled in all the religious world, came to him and he said, you're, you're a master, I understand you're a teacher. What about all this? And Jesus made a statement that I believe all of us are, as Christians are familiar with. He said, you must be born again. And Nicodemus said, what? Can I go into my mother's womb and be born? And he said, no. He spoke about two different births. He spoke about a water, which was a natural birth. But he also spoke about a spiritual birth. And this spiritual birth was Christ coming into our life by choice, experiencing a newness, a new want to, a new direction in our life, allowing God not only to speak to us from above, but to literally live within us. Remember Jesus after his crucifixion, he said, I'm, not, I'm leaving you, but I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, the person, not an it, not a thing, the Holy Spirit, and he will lead you, he will guide you into all truth. He will be with you, and he will, he will instruct you. And so as Christians, <clears throat> when something, a choice is before us, we have an inner small voice, the Holy Spirit saying, yes, this is the way, walk in it, or no, this is wrong. And so as Christians, we grow in this experience. We grow in the grace and knowledge. I remember a man from, actually he was from Oregon originally. He was, grew, grew up as a somewhat a bashful man, but this man's name was Ray Jennings. In fact, he lived in Boone Grove County for a little while. He traveled all over the world, and I remember one particular time <clears throat> he was sharing, and he opened the scripture up to the first chapter of Genesis, and, and God said, let there be. And the scripture opens up, and it speaks about the, the earth was dark and, and, and void. It was empty. Dear ones, we live in a world that's empty. We live in a world that unless you and I as Christians, the scripture says we're living epistles known and read of all men. You're going to read me after I stand before you, and I know you, and those of you I know, I've enjoyed knowing. I've got a few back there that give me a little bit of a trouble. That's called the Maxwell family, but I work for that guy now. <laughs> uh, he said, I hope this isn't hard on you because I'm here. I'm surprised to be here, but we've had some great times. I've, uh, I'm, I'm in the, you name it. Uh, I've learned to love and enjoy their family. Caden, the young youngster of that bunch, I've got him in the hunt. I have bird dogs, by the way, so don't hold that against me, but I love to watch a dog. And again, I share this from a spiritual perspective. They have instincts. Those, I have pointing dogs. Those instincts are clear. I see little puppies running around all of a sudden. The bird flies by and they lock up and freeze. That's instinct. God has given us spiritual instincts. He's put his nature within us, his nature to do as he would do. In fact, the scripture says, in this, you will be as I am in this world. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You are the, you are the difference in this world. And so again, as I heard Brother Ray mention, speak, he, he read out the first chapter of the book of Genesis, and it goes on in a very wonderful, powerful. In fact, let's just read a couple of verses there. I'm not good at turning pages anymore. My fingers don't work real good, but <clears throat> so I use an iPad. You all probably heard of them, an iPhone. Anyhow, bear with me. I had a young man in church that I pastored that says, I was reading all this stuff out of books and concordance and everything. He says, why don't you just hit it online? I said, no, nah, it's not up to that. Well, that changed. Old, old, you can't teach an old dog new tricks with any. In the book of Genesis, the first chapter, the verse first says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. This verse declares the power of God's Word. This is the Bible written on white pages, black letters. The living Word is Jesus Christ. 
The Bible says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will stand. It's not just talking about the written page. It's talking about the living God, living and dwelling in every believer, everyone that has accepted him as their Lord and Savior. And we know the scripture is very clear. Everything he did, it says in the, following, in the conclusion of those verses, and it was good. He saw that it was good. Dear ones, today it is good. God's word declared to hurting people is, is a powerful thing. And dear ones, we are the difference. Are we caught up in the spirit of the world? In Romans, the 12th chapter, says, it says this. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. That renewing comes through the influence of God's word in our life. And dear ones, if we do not have God's word abiding in it, I know he is a living word, but he speaks to us. Faith comes how? Sister, I wanted to tell you that was a tremendous scripture and the song. Those are right up scripture I had written down, by the way. I always ex get excited when I have the Holy Spirit speaking to different ones. And, the, and I don't, anyhow, I'll leave that be. It's good. <clears throat> the power of God's word is transforming, not being conformed to this, renewed by the new. Faith cometh by what? Hearing and hearing by what? The word of God. Dear ones, we don't have to read the Bible, but if we want to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord, we are going to want to know what God's word is. Again, as I was thinking about sharing today, and something, again, this is my own personal conviction, so I'm going to share with you what God has been sharing with me. Because of the anger and because of all the discontent and all the, in, and the attitudes of, of this world, how are we going to face this? The description of God in the Scripture and even in the experience, God is love. In fact, John 3, 16 declares, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have what? Everlasting life. How are we doing? And again, whenever I read, I read through Hebrews 11th chapter again yesterday and today in the last several days. And <clears throat> faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And, and by these individuals, they experience some. And it says, this is something we must identify with. Every one of us are part of the chapter. Every one of us are building through faith a testimony, building through that experience of life something that is eternal. How are we doing? Are we experiencing God's transformation ability in our lives because we call ourselves Christians? Are we experiencing His love? God so loved us. How are we doing in loving Him? Do you really love the Lord today? I mean, answer that to the Lord, not to me. And I begin to think, I love that woman. All right, there's several aspects of loving. First of all, they get your attention. When I looked at a young lady 64 years ago plus, she got my attention. God giving his life on Calvary's cross, God working in, our, in, 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 our, in a something began to resonate with us, began to speak volumes to us, and, and we were drawn to that. I can remember when I asked the Lord to be my Savior, I was only 10 years old, but I remember the preacher said this, he will remove your sins. 10 years old, you're not that big, that's not that big, oh yes it is. I had grown up, in fact, I was carried as a baby in the church and lived there all my life, every service. <clears throat> but I knew that something was wrong. I remember as a young man, if I did something wrong, if I lied, I did this or that, it was wrong. I felt, I felt guilt. I felt something was wrong. Now, today, psychology says, well, you're under this load of psychology. You, you need to be free from it. You, you do it. You, you need to be free from all that. Well, freedom came when I asked the Lord to come to my heart. And I can still remember in, in sitting in that pew of the church that, that evening, I can still remember a load lifting off my shoulders. Ten years old? Come on. Seriously. If I've ever been serious in my life, I'm serious. And a peace came into my heart. And God began to work in my life, even as a young man. Did I walk that way? No, 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 no. Len, all of you guys know me when I was... No, no. We, we, I made... I sinned. But throughout my life... When a choice would come, when a challenge would come, and I talk, and I thank God for his intervention, if I'd have gone the way I wanted to go, I wouldn't be here today. Kay would not be my wife today. And I, God only knows what I would have been. But praise God for his intervention. He is the shepherd of our soul. You know, I think about David, King David, <clears throat> shepherd boy. He would, he would be out there in the, in the, with the flocks, meditating, the lion, the bear, tried to attack, all those things. He learned through his experience of life to trust God. In fact, one of my favorite verses, how are we doing on time, by the way? you have a clock around here? It's 10.30. 
Ten after eleven. I got twenty minutes. Oh God! Let's let's turn to the Book of Psalms for a minute. I'd like to share a scripture. It's one of one of my favorite. <clears throat> Again, Psalms in the middle of your Bible. Remember that. Psalms. <clears throat> And let's go to the 20, 26, I believe it is, 27, Psalms 27. And again, David is record, recorded in the scripture as a man after God's own heart to fulfill all his will. And I've heard it said that Jesse, pardon me, his son of Jesse, but uh, David was a, a, an old covenant saint with a new covenant spirit. He knew God in such a way. And, and you read the Psalms, you can really relate to some of the stuff he went through. Y'all been through trials? Y'all deal with stress? Y'all can raise your hand. Y'all deal with, I'm the only one, can I? But anyhow. <laughs> but the point I'm getting is that God helps us. And I wish I could say I always am victorious in stress and trial. I'm not. But I know God is faithful, and He's there to work in my heart. In the verse of Psalms, pardon me, chapter 27 of Psalms, I got a kick out of Kylie the other day. She was giving me some scriptures, getting ready to get married. She was reading a whole bunch of references they gave her, and was getting ready for prep, marriage preparation to her pastor. And she said, what scripture is? I said, I don't know. She said, Here. anyhow, I won't leave that be. But she was telling me, I said, I've always read this as letters. It's not chapters and verses. I use that so you all can follow me. But the point being, and, and we had a good joke, but I was so blessed to hear how God is instilling that in her life. And that's what's maintained my wife and I through many, many years. We took instruction the same way, the same the same Bible, although I don't know if you're King James, I read King James because I'm in tune to it. I read all the other translations as well. i got to tell you a story about that. I also run off on these rabbit trails. Bear with me. One time I was preaching and sharing one son, son, uh, Wednesday night our Bible study at church over there, and, and I was saying, I'm going to read out another, I'm going to read out another uh, translation out of the NIV. And all of a sudden, a hush fell, NIV. HIV. I said HIV, not the NIV. I said HIV. And I said, whoa. I mean the NIV, not the HIV. But anyhow, those stuff's effect. Let's read a couple of verses here in Psalm 27. David again, this young man that's out in the field watching over the flock. The Lord is the light. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? David had learned to abide and, and, and find his strength in the Lord. And I think of a young man all alone out there in the middle of lions and bears, whatever. He had found this relationship, and he spoke it to the Lord. What I'm getting at is we're talking about do we love the Lord? We have to express ourselves. I found one thing in my relationship with this young lady over here. This, well, she's white here now, but anyhow. She, one thing that would irritate her is, you know, there's, you can blow up, clam up, or shut up, you know, different aspects of our relationships. I had a tendency, whenever we got into a little difference, uh, I would clam up. And she said, what are you, you know, another, it didn't go well, I'll just leave it like that. <clears throat> Do we relate to the Lord? How are we growing in this love relationship? And again, the point being that we must express ourselves. Yes, we're thankful that the Lord gave his life. And sometimes I think we are somewhat calloused when we see Jesus hanging on a cross and we think, wow, that's tremendous love. But do we relate to it? Through Easter season, do we relate to the agony, the suffering he went through for my sins and for yours? Do we relate to the fact that he gave his life, tortured, tortured, he had given his life, and as he looked upon the crowd, he saw us. In fact, the, the painting of one of the great architects of the world painted his own picture in that painting. And I believe, again, we were there. We were a part of that. But he loved us even knowing. And, and, and here's the point. Because he loved us so much, what did he say to his heavenly Father? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And folks, until we have a spiritual perspective of what God's love is all about, we're going to take it personally. You know, God created us 
a triune, as a triune God, God the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, He tre created us as a triune being. We have a body, we have a mind, and we have a spirit. We're different than the animals. I've never seen any of my dogs take a moment to pray or meditate. They, they're physically there, and, and mentally they have a capacity as a dog. We have a spiritual capacity. Being born of the Spirit, God has given us the ability to understand and perceive Him. And that's important for us to grow in this aspect of relationship. So again, as David, again, related to the Lord, look what he says in verse 2. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came up on me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. In other words, God protected. And so he wasn't consumed by fear. I, I've, I talk to a lot of people who are either filled with fear or they're filled with condemnation of their past. I remember a dear lady many, many years ago that had gone through something in her youth that had to do something out of the command of her husband, and she bore that for 50 years. And we were talking. I said, what's on your heart? And she shared weeping. And I said, God's forgiven you. The Bible says, <clears throat> you know, not only does he love us, he forgives us. And to, to forgive and to cleanse us from, you know, all of our sins. And, and so we are under this load all the time. And then David makes a statement. This is one of my favorite, one of my many favorites in the scripture. <clears throat> and uh, I'm skipping to verse 4. He makes this statement. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in this temple. This speaks of an ongoing relationship wherein we understand God. And, and dear ones, I believe one of the great problems in my life, and maybe yours if you can identify with this, we have a perception of God, limited. If you spend time in His temple, in His presence, reading and meditating upon His Word, it will change you. It will make you different. And again, throughout the scripture, we see so many statements, again, of his grace and knowledge. <clears throat> I was thinking of uh, one particular, in, in, again, one portion of scripture again. Remember this, this, the parallel written in the book of, of, of Matthew, where it speaks about the ten virgins coming to the, uh, waiting for their, their master to, for, the, for the, the groom. And it said five were foolish and five were wise. And it says they didn't prepare themselves. And the point is they were not in fellowship. They were not in tune. If I not just lived with my wife, but only addressed talked to her once, once a week. Let's use it like for church. Just once a week to come. What kind of relationship would you have? I'll see you next week, Kay. Every day is an ongoing relationship. And how we address that, how we grow in that love. And this is what it's all about. In the Gospel of John, in fact, let's turn, let's turn to the first, first, the epistle of John, the first, first epistle of John. Bear with me, I'm having a little problem with these glasses. <clears throat> In the first epistle of John, let's go to uh, let's go to the fourth chapter. He speaks again to start this chapter. He speaks again about the, the discernment, the ability to understand what is speaking to us, where we're coming from. Are we in tune with God? Are we walking in that aspect of His love? And he goes on to say, and let's begin with. Verse 4, chapter 4, verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God has given us the capacity and ability to overcome everything, even death itself. As we read in the scripture about all those in faith had overcome through their experience of life, in life. Are you going to have trials? Or are you going to have tests? In this world, the scripture declares, you shall have peace and joy and content. No, it doesn't say that. It's in this life, in this world, you shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome. And so overcoming is the ability to understand what you're going through, why you're going through it, and to deal with it with a sense of realization that he's already provided the end victory. 
Faith is the substance of hope for seen, not seen. You know, we could really do a sale job if everything we spoke about, boom, it was there. But that's not faith. That's not faith. We have farmers in there. When you put a seed in the ground, are you guaranteed to have a crop? Somebody said, I hope it rains. <laughs> I know that. I've been there. I've done that. I've seen, you know, even animals wanting to know what, 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 what the outcome is going to be. All of these things have faith. And we have so much faith in us in natural things. You turn a switch on, expect the lights to come on. You have faith if you took the cover off and grabbed a couple of wires. You're not going to do it. Because you know that you'll get shocked. So we have a, a natural faith, but a spiritual faith is that ability to know that God so loved us, and in loving us, He made all of these uh, possible for us that we might have glory, glorious experiences, love and grace. Let's read on a couple of times, and then we'll get to the, I'm getting closer to the end. John 4, the fourth verse, verse 5. They are of the world because... Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And again, in the, in the Hebrew and the Greek, there are different aspects of love. There's physical attraction. In fact, we hear a song, we're going to make love. That's lust and that's physical. We, you know, when you see animals having intercourse, they're not making love. They're reproducing. So a lot of that what we call make, in, love is, is a physical thing, not a spiritual. Love is three different aspects. Physical, there's mental, the aspect of, of people loving Baseball, loving this, loving that, and so on and so forth. And there's the agape love, the love of the Father. That's the ability that God gives us to go beyond what seems to be supernatural. God's ability so loved the world that He gave. It's not a getting, it's a giving. And God is wanting us to be givers in this world. Everyone wants to get. We're blessed to give, He says, and to receive. And again, experiencing God's grace and His love. And again, as this relationship grows, it's powerful. Look, look what he goes on to say here. Verse 9. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that he might, we might live through Him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and his son, sent His Son to be the go between for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us and His love is perfected in us. Hereby, we, hereby know we that we dwell in Him and He in us because He hath given us of His Spirit. Again, that aspect of giving us of His Spirit, recognizing again that He has given us the capacity to see things as He sees things. Are we loving God because we're seen and thankful? The Scripture in one place, the love of God constrains us. It enables us to see things and do things as He would do them. When we see, again, those things around us that are beyond our control, do we look through our own natural eyes or do we have a spiritual realization? I listened to a message this morning concerning the return of the Lord. The scripture goes on here, says, "Where well, there's no fear brings torment. God loving us enables us not to be tormented, but to realize and recognize again that He's in control. As we read again, the saints of old there in Hebrews 11, some, it says, chose not to be delivered that they might experience a better resurrection. Wow! To do, to, and again, David, one thing I have desired, I'm going to seek after, to dwell in the house of the Lord all my days, all the days of my life. Every born-again believer here is going to experience eternity in the presence of God. Eternity knowing Him as He is. Eternity experiencing His grace and, and wherewithal. And as He created this beautiful world that we live in, although it's been messed up by some of us, the point being that that which He's gone to prepare a place for is beyond our expectation. May God enable us to see this. Again, just to 
close us for a little bit. A couple of scriptures that I've identified as some of the great blessings in my life is in, in Isaiah, the 51st chapter. He said, everyone that thirsteth, verse 1 of chapter 55, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye, come, just come. Come ye by, without money, without price. Let God fill your life. The scripture says, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness of what? Shall be filled. To experience the fullness, fullness of God. To experience His goodness. <clears throat> Isaiah 40, 31 says, again, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall walk and not be weary. They shall run and not faint. You ever watch the pictures of eagle? In fact, we've seen some in our community now, eagles. They get above it. They see from a diff different perspective. If you're living down here, you may see the eagle, but you can't see all that's going on. To live in the Spirit, you will see from the perspective that God gives you, enables you to see Him as He is. Do you love the Lord this morning? Do you tell Him you love Him? We sang songs about that. I love that. That church. We are the church. What is the world seeing as they look at us? Living epistles known and read of all men. <clears throat> Some of you I don't know, but I love you. God's kids, you better get used to me. You're going to put up with me for a long, long time. Shall we pray? <clears throat> Jesus, I thank you this morning for the privilege of getting to know more of your kids, my brothers and sisters, and you. And Father, this morning, there be one here that has never experienced the joy of the rebirth of your Holy Spirit coming into our lives, and not just challenge us, but drawn us and then begin to be changed into your likeness. Father, I pray, as I remember as a small boy, I said, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins, come into my heart, make me new, make me as you are. We ask that blessing on everyone here. And Father, may we be a strength to each other. May we be a blessing to each other. And may we see you in each other's lives. And help us to love each other, Lord. Help us to walk as you walked, talk as you talked, and be as you are. Again, we want to thank you for your love and grace, for your long suffering. I say that on my behalf. And again, for your faithfulness and goodness to us. I ask now your blessing upon each and every one here. In Jesus' eternal mighty name I pray, amen. God bless you.